Homework 17, confidence intervals for population means, standard deviation known, video 2. Interval estimates. In the previous video, we introduced the concept of a point estimate, where we have a single value from a sample used to estimate a single value from a population. I believe we estimated the mean GPA for all students in a state to be 2.75, based on the mean GPA of a sample of students at one school being 2.75. And the other example was we estimated that the percent of times that all baseball teams win their home game is 53.1% based on the samples of baseball teams during one season winning 53.1% of their home games. But the problem with the point estimate is it's a single value and a sample rarely is exactly like a population. If it were, there wouldn't be no need for inferential statistics. We would always just look at a sample and say that the population does the same thing. So in order to get a better description of something for a population, we can take the measurement that we get from a sample and open up an interval of, interval of values centered at it. And that would give us what's called an interval estimate. An interval estimate is an interval of values centered at a point estimate that estimates a population parameter. For example, let's go back to the GPA example where we had a point estimate of 2.75. Let's construct an interval estimate for mu, the population parameter that this point estimate is estimating. Let's construct an interval estimate for mu centered at a sample mean of 2.75 with a margin of error of 0.50. Now, what do I mean by margin of error? And what do I mean by an interval centered at a value? Well, think of a number line, and let's put the point estimate in the middle. In this case, x bar equals 2.75. We're going to open up an interval of values centered at 2.75, and to keep it centered, we have to go the same distance to the left and to the right. That distance is called the margin of error. So if we were to go 0.50 to the left, then the left end of this interval would be 2.75 minus 0.50, which is equal to 2.25. And if we were to go to the margin of error, 0.50 to the right, then that would put us at 2.75 plus 0.50, which is 3.25. So now we have an interval of values. By going the same distance to the left and to the right of the center of our interval. How can we write this interval? We can actually write it a variety of ways. We can say that uh, mu is between 2.25 and 3.75. So we can actually write it in words. We can also write it in symbols by saying 2.25 is less than mu, and at the same time mu is less than 3.75. So we can say one of these two variations. Or, if you're familiar with interval notation from an algebra class, we can say open parentheses 2.25 comma 3.75. But all three of these mean the same thing. All the numbers between 2.25 and 3.75. So what we're saying is, based on this one sample's GPA, we're estimating that the GPA of all students is between these two numbers. A pretty wide range, a pretty large margin of error, if you will, but there's a way to control the margin of error, as we'll see towards the end of this series. We can do the same thing for p hats. For example, let's construct an interval estimate for p centered at p hat equals 0.531 with a margin of error of 0.05. The trick is remembering, or rather understanding, the role of the margin of error. The margin of error says go to the center of your interval, which in this case is p hat equals 0.531, and then go to the left, whatever the margin of error is, 
in this case 0 0.05, and go to the right, whatever the margin of error is. When you go to the left, you subtract the margin of error, so the left end of this would be 0 0.531 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.481. And on the right end, we would take our center, our point estimate, 0.531, and add the margin of error, so plus 0 0.05, and that would give us 0.581. So we could say that based on this sample's proportion, we're estimating that the population proportion is between 0.481 and 0.581. Now, how do we get the margin of error? Well, we're about to learn that in the next video, but once we have the margin of error, it just says go left and right of the center and make your interval. If you wanted to write these generically, we could say that the way we built this first interval is to take x bar and add or subtract the margin of error. Now, in some books, the margin of error is represented with the lowercase m. I don't like that because that also represents midpoint from earlier in the semester. I prefer to put capital M-E for margin of error. So we can describe what we did here by saying x bar plus or minus the margin of error. And we can do the same thing down here, except we did it to p hat. We constructed our interval estimate for p by calculating p hat plus or minus the margin of error. The remaining videos in this series are going to focus on this type of confidence interval. Since we are talking about a confidence interval for population mean, it will be centered at sample mean. The next series of videos will go into depth about um, a confidence interval for population proportion. And the bulk of what's about to happen is how to calculate the margin of error based on something called the, the critical value, or the, excuse me, based on something called the confidence level.